Huzzah, everyone! We are talking about Curse Season 1 over here on Netflix today with Catherine Langford, a big fan. I'm a big fan of hers. I'm sure many of you guys are as well. But is it any good? Well, let's find out. Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new TV review for Netflix Season 1 of Curse. If you guys are new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button, where I do tons of geeky content and tons of early reviews for a ton of great stuff every single day on a daily basis. If you guys are new here, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on content like this over here on a daily basis, as well as comment down below and let me know your guys' thoughts. Are you guys excited for Curse? Are you not? Let's discuss it all down there. Curse is about a teenage sorceress named Nimue who encounters a young Arthur on his quest to find a powerful and ancient sword. I was really excited for this show nonetheless because of Catherine Langford. I'm a major fan of her and especially the, some of the smaller stuff that she's been in. I think she's an actress who deserves this kind of forefront of material and Cursed really much gives her that. Plus the graphic novel was created by Frank Miller, a comic creator that I've just always been a big fan of, always looked up to him and his creative visions that he's truly had into this wild space of mythology and all that tying together made me excited. I like the trailers, I like the pre Reviews. And overall, I can say Cursed is a decent overall time. I think it does have faults and falters here and there, but usually a lot of first seasons do. But I found the potential in here to be a lot rooted inside the characters and story to the point where I'm actually excited to see more of a season two than a season one. Which really, let's just start out with my pros. My number one pro for this is Catherine Langford as Nimue. She is incredible in here. I actually think she's absolutely the best part about this whole entire series. And truly, she's actually the one who gives the overall best performance out of every single actor. Yes, there are some faults to some of the writing, which we will get to, and some of the stuff that she has to do in some of the subplots, but overall her character is really the central focus, and really the thing that I was really jived in. I believed in her adventure. I believed in what she was at stake for. I liked a lot of the powers and the mythology behind her character, and really the story, the tragicness of her and how she's kind of been left out. I think for outsiders, people who've ever felt like an outsider are really going to relate to her. I, I, you know me, I've, I'm a geek. A lot of people didn't like that back in the past. And, you know, sometimes you can feel like an outsider. And I think a lot of people are really going to fall in love with her character. And I think a lot of that goes to the performance itself. I also really want to give a shout out to Gustav Skarsgård, who plays Merlin in here. And, of course, Devin Tyrell, who plays a young King Arthur in here. Both of them really bring a nice mix of material in here, and really both of them do such a fascinating job at that. This interpretation of Merlin is really different than one that we've seen before, but I kind of like this different interpretation. I like this drunkard type of druid that we've never really encountered. The magic, the mythology of him, the symbolism that he really goes through on this journey are quite interesting. And really this version of Arthur, again, is a different type of version than we've seen before. He's not the humble, kind of brooding one that we've seen before who's, you know, this kind of underdog hero. He is someone who is a badass at nature, but also has grown up with the wrong part of people, and I really like that. Again, the series really mixes it up with their, these two main characters because these are characters that we've followed along before, seen many interpretations of, and this is a different interpretation. And again, I have never read the graphic novel that Frank Miller wrote, and I don't know really much about it. I don't know the differences, how accurate this is to it, so I do want to understand that. I do not know how great of an adaption this is but as a series I really like these characters and I thought overall they were some of the most interesting parts about this whole season one. Overall the transitions and editing style for this show is actually really good. I loved how it felt like it was just coming and breathing to life off a graphic novel. It really does feel like you're reading a graphic novel and it's just telling you a picture story. It's quite impressive and when you actually get to see some of the designs that they did inside this show it is really outstanding how they were able to bring it all to life and I thought those were some of the most out, out inspiring things things of this whole entire show and one of the things that really sets it itself against other fantasy shows that we've seen before on Netflix, Hulu, HBO, all of those sorts. And it made it for a very what could be a story that is kind of convoluted at times and maybe you look at The Witcher which I thought easily that was the worst part about the season one was the convolution of some of the story and the timing and all that sort of stuff. The show in fact actually does different elements with that and I again really appreciated that overall. Diving into that aspect a little bit more, the mythology, the world, all that, this whole thing is just great. The action sequence are actually quite exciting at times and overall when you look at all of those they really come together in a really stylish manner and this is a brutal and gory show that really there's times where you see heads are lopping off wolves are getting torn apart people are getting torn in half it is 
really out there. And, you know, I, I like when shows can go that far. But what I will say is that there are times where someone will, like, slash someone and there's like no definitive cut or anything there but then at times there's other ones and it it kind of made it for a weird it's like we can't do that that's going to be a little bit too brutal but we can show someone get cut in half and then show the, the other side of the body it, it's a little bit weird and different in that per particular elements of the story and I, it kind of caught me off guard and I don't really get why some of those things some of the sound effects kind of seemed a little bit too much when it came down to the sound design and the sound mixing but really what this show comes about is that this was a hard show to binge for me, and this could be different for everyone. Um, I got through the first season within just a couple of days, but I really felt like I had to force myself to watch this show at times. And necessarily, that's not because it's a terrible show. It's not even a bad show. It's a pretty good show. But it's one that I expected to be great and one that I wanted to be great. And a lot of the storylines in here seemed a little bit too much. Some of them seem a little bit mismatched. And some of them are really, I think some of the subplots in here were completely useless and had nowhere else to go with. I think that is actually where I really get to my deepest cons for this is some of the writing. The romance in here, I didn't really believe in. And one of the episodes in particular when it's building it up just was kind of cringy for me. I just looked at him like, come on. Like, we didn't see that happening. Why is he denying her? Why is it? It's dumb. And some other characters come into play that I just didn't think we needed to see so much of their story you know if it's in the comics that's fine it's fine to adapt it but sometimes you need to know what to cut and what to leave and I think some of the things is a little bit trimming and I think some of the episodes you know lead up to be 48 to 56 minutes and I think this season as a whole arc of 10 episodes could have been done in at least eight and even adding to that some of the episodes could have at least been 40 minutes 45 minutes and I think it would have made for a better structured show overall and I think that's where I get down to my deepest cons for this and where you know I really grade a, a show by how much I really want to binge it and Curse didn't drag me back because of these meandering subplots that at times just kind of dragged the story down. These repetitive elements that really got in the middle of all these characters. And I just felt like they were trying to figure out places and figure out things for them to do. Definitely the season does pick up by the middle point of the season. It finally made me like, okay, I really want to see where this is going. And I was still interested in Nimue's character alone and Catherine Langford's performance and the action and all that stuff. But it just felt very repetitive in the beginning arcs of this all. And it just felt like it was trying to show us so much at once. And I feel like it should have been toned down just a bit more to certain characters when it really was Nimue, Arthur, and Merlin's story. Mostly Nimue and Merlin, to be honest with you. Please, my final thoughts on Curse. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Are you guys excited for the show? Are you not? I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Of course, hit that like and subscribe if you guys are new here as well so you don't miss out on content like this over here on a daily basis. As well as head on over to Sam Sean Films on how to see films early. And of course, just a big thing to you and a big thing to my Patreon supporters. Because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. First season one is not bad. It's not even terrible. It's not great either, but it's good. It has a solid foundation for what can make a great season two. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. The action's great. It's stylized and pretty cool. The blood, there's a lot of it. And sometimes the sound mixing is a little bit too much for the gruesomeness. And I wish they would have gone a little bit further with those elements. The characters in here are superbly the best part about this. Nimue, Arthur, and Merlin, I was really sucked into them the performances are all outstanding especially Catherine Langford who just kills this role really though the structure of the story some of the writing with the romance in general some of the repetitiveness really makes it for the show to feel a little bit dragged out instead of 10 episodes it should have been eight it could have even been shorter episodes and I think it would have made for a more self-contained time some of the subplots go nowhere and if just by the end of the season I felt like I'd gone on a long journey truly with Nimue and even felt some of the frustrations that she had felt on this journey and I really shouldn't have I love fans fantasy it's one of my favorite elements and overall I still enjoyed this show but I think it's gonna make for a stronger season two if it does get one because of the elements are structured inside this one the red paladins I didn't even mention really cool nemesis and I really liked them throughout the whole entire season one they were really menacing and really when they showed up the way they play with the characters the editing and of course the transitions was just quite unique so with all that said I'm gonna give curse season one a c plus people will be like Zach that's that's pretty low yeah it's like a 7.5 out of 10 it's pretty good guys it's still passing grade thank you guys again so much for clicking on this so let me know your guys' thoughts on Curse. Did you guys like the show? Did you not? Do you feel the same way I do? I'm so curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Thank you guys again. And of course, until next time, stay classy.